<laughs> this episode of Evil Villain RC is brought to you by Vanquish Products. Hey guys, Evil here. Um, this isn't the uh, Wraith Upgrade Volume 3 I was planning on giving you guys, uh, but I have run across some required upgrades I need to do. Um, I've switched to a different servo, and uh, that servo is giving me some BEC issues. Uh, the Tekken BEC is just not hacking. I don't know if the BEC is going out of it, um, or if it's just too much for it, but uh, it's basically thermaling the ESC. It's causing shutdowns whenever uh, uh, under heavy steering input, like if it's pulling too much load, it's just shutting it down. So I've been meaning to do this for a while, so I went ahead and picked up a uh, uh, Castle Creations uh, 10 amp BEC. Um, this is a, a great upgrade. Um, I just thought I would show you guys how I do it, uh, so that uh, this is, you know, so you can use it for uh, your crawler or whatever. But it's a very worthwhile uh, upgrade, and uh, it's a necessary upgrade if you're going to be uh, uh, installing some uh, really heavy duty servo. So let's take a look at what we got. So here we have the Castle BEC. I uh, haven't wired it yet. I'm going to show you guys all about that. These are uh, Dean's mini plugs. Um, I use these for wiring a BEC instead of hard wiring straight to my ESC. Um, it's great for emergency disconnect or uh, if you need to move things around, uh, easy to change the ESC and whatnot. And then these, this is a uh, just a JR 3 inch servo extension. And this is just some off brand. Uh, Y connector and the reason why I use these is uh, I modify these because uh, when you install a BEC you have to uh, disconnect the, the ESC's the e <laughs> there's too many acronyms you have to disconnect the ESC's BEC uh, from the receiver because you don't want voltage coming in from that uh, as well as from your your external BEC so I modify these by disconnecting uh, the red wire uh, coming in from the ESC instead of modifying the the pigtail that's on the ESC and if you've ever had to replace one of those it's not any fun so uh, it's much better just to uh, pick one of these up and uh, modify it and then just plug your ESC into that uh, much more convenient if you need to change back or if you're moving ESCs around uh, but I've just found this to be a lot more convenient way to do it so let's uh, yank the wraith apart here and I'll show you what, uh, what I'm doing okay so I've pre-soldered one of the mini Dean's connections to the uh, battery terminal on the ESC um, and I do that on most of my crawler ESC's just uh, it just makes it much easier than having to move the BEC also and if things get out of hand uh, you know you have some signal loss and a servo is trying to eat itself or whatever uh, this makes it much easier just to yank that uh, to turn that off because most people do not run an on off switch or if you can't get to the battery plug or whatever so you want to solder that some people solder actually to the the battery plug um, i solder straight to where the batteries plug into the terminal on the esc so that's one side and then i'll hook up the other side to the castle bc and we'll go solder that up right now all right so <clears throat> Here's the BEC, and this is for people who are just watching this, maybe because they don't know what a BEC is. Um, BEC stands for Battery Eliminator Circuit. Uh, it's basically a regulator, and what this does is you hook this straight up to battery power, and this regulates power going to your electronics. And it regulates it by plugging input into the battery plug on your receiver. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of a throwback from the old days uh, when we used to have to plug uh, battery packs in to power our servos, receivers and whatnot. Um, newer speed control started incorporating the BEC or battery eliminator circuit uh, but they're often underpowered especially for crawling applications. Um, sometimes they're 3 amp, uh, 5 amp, um, not enough to support a, a high torque servo. So the 10 amp uh, Castle is uh, pretty widely used. It will handle most heavy duty servos if you're only going to run one. If you're going to run like a dig setup with two heavy duty servos or front and rear steer, um, you probably want to get the 
the Pro BEC, which I believe is 20 amps, 25 amps, I'm not sure. I've never had to run it. The, B, uh, the 10 amp has always been sufficient for me, so what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and solder on a Dean's mini plug to this. Uh, so all I have to do is plug it into my ESC, and then I'll show you how I modify the uh, servo extension so that you don't have to uh, uh, modify the pigtail uh, coming off of your, your ESC. So. Alright, what I'm going to do now is uh, pre-tin this connector so that uh, I can uh, solder to the BEC. Now, if anybody's wondering why I'm using a three-prong connector as opposed to a two-prong, <coughs> uh, it's because the first time I plugged one of the or I bought one of these plugs, I bought a three-prong, and I've just been using them ever since. They work just fine for two wires you can just leave one unhooked. The uh, castle leads are actually already pre-tinned, so I don't have to tin those. Just put your shrink wrap on there. And uh, for my particular wiring I have the hot on the uh, on the uh, separated side of the plug so Sorry, this guy on here. For you guys who are new to soldering or uh, have trouble soldering, I definitely recommend going out and buying a high quality soldering iron, uh, Hako or whatever the popular brand is these days. Um, they're well worth the money. They're like 70 or 80 bucks, but totally worth the money. Uh, what I'm using is a uh, an old Ungar uh, UTC 300, but uh, they were purchased by Weller and then put out of business. So, but I think I still think they make the greatest soldering irons. Um, they just do a fantastic job. So, if you ever run across one used, I definitely recommend picking it up. So, that to focus. solder on there. I'm just going to do the shrink wrap. Just hit it with a little torch. Ready to be plugged straight into my ESC. Let's do the pigtail now. All right. So the reason why I have two servo extensions um, is for uh, some people might have different setups. Um, I'm using just a Spectrum three-channel uh, receiver. Um, I also have a light kit on my Wraith uh, because it was RTR. It came with it. So since I'm using a three-channel receiver, um, I have enough plugs for. Um, to be able to uh, power my uh, LEDs uh, and everything. But if you are maybe you're running multiple LED kits, which uh, like I am on my Honcho, uh, or maybe you only have a two channel receiver, the, uh, the Y harness will allow you to still plug in lights and run a BEC. So essentially you can uh, uh, cut power going to the receiver from uh, from the uh, speed control, but you can still power the uh, LED kit with the BEC and the speed control, um, or you could wire it so you could be powering it off the BEC as well. But um, that allows you that flexibility if you don't have enough channels. Um, I do, so I'm just going to show you what I do with uh, a standard uh, just servo extension. So in short, all you're going to do is plug your speed control into this and plug this into your receiver. 
So and because you have to you have to cut power from the ESC going into the receiver uh, because you're going to be using the external BC to power everything. So uh, I'm just going to basically just nip this red wire. Um, alternative, you can just pull it out. Um, you can uh, undo one of these prongs and just pull the wire out and tape it back or whatever if you want. Um, that's if you want to reverse the process later. Um, I usually just cut it. And there you can see, red no longer makes a connection. Uh, it's cut back nice and short, so it's not going to short out on anything. Um, that's going to work just great. So one thing I, uh, I forgot to mention about this uh, BEC is it's pro programmable. Um, you can take it out of the box and use it um, and plug it in and it's going to work just fine. Um, however, you're not going to get full performance out of your electronics. I believe it defaults to somewhere around 5 volts. Um, you're going to need one of these. Uh, this is a Castle Link. This allows you to uh, plug in your computer and uh, modify the firmware on Castle ESCs uh, and BECs. Um, I believe you can also, well, yeah, you can also modify um, the settings on uh, the Axial A2 uh, ESCs, which are actually made by Castle, as well as the Holmes Hobby uh, ESCs uh, can also be managed by the software. So these are like 20 25 bucks. Uh, good investment because uh, you're going to be using Castle products if you're in the RC for any length at all. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this up and uh, make sure my BEC is set to 6 volts, which is what I'm going to run my servos at. Alright, so I had to switch computers. You know what they say about a uh, mechanic's car is always broken or whatnot. Uh, it was the same for computer techs. Uh, <laughs> my uh, uh, regular computer that I do this with isn't working, so I switch over to the laptop. So, <clears throat> plug in your Castle Link, plug it into your BEC. When it detects it, it looks like this. And uh, you're going to want to switch over here. Oops. And this is going to show your output voltage. See that defaults to 5.1 volts. Um, most internal BECs on electronic speed control are 4.8 volts. Um, some of them are 6 volt. This is roughly what a stock ESC would put out. So we're going to bump it up to 6 volts. If I can keep this in frame. Uh, which will be uh, adequate for the servo. Uh, to get the best torque out of it and everything and uh, not have to do anything to electronics. You can if you're running uh, some of these new high voltage servos you can uh, run 7.4 volts or even more on some models uh, with this BEC and this kind of allows you to separate uh, or regulate power differently to a servo because your receiver usually or actually no actually I take that back the receiver can handle higher voltage but basically some of the rest of the electronics may have to remain at like 6 volts uh, and then you can run, you know, 11.1 1 or whatever uh, on a uh, high voltage servo. So that allows you to kind of split up the electronics. But anyway, I'm not going to get off on a tangent. Set it to 6 volts. I'm going to, yeah, I'm not going to update right now. I'm going to hit update. And you see that. And now my PC is set to 6 volts. So I'm ready to pop it in the race. All right, so this rat's nest I got here is my uh, electronic setup on the Wraith. So what I'm going to do first is unplug the ESC and plug it into this pigtail. And that'll take its power out of the loop uh, so they won't have any issues uh, when we hook up our external BEC. essentially disconnect it without having to modify our ESC pigtail at all. So we can go ahead and plug this in uh, to the throttle channel on the receiver like normal. 
but now if you tried to power up it wouldn't get any power so now we need to hook up our BEC I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into the wiring I've already put on my ESC and then it's hooked up and then I'm gonna plug uh, uh, signal into the uh, or not signal but I'm gonna plug into the battery port on the uh, receiver <clears throat> and then before I put it all back together I'm gonna fire it up and test it and make sure uh, everything's powered up and is working okay servo and throttle signal so everything's working I'm gonna go ahead and button it up all right well there's everything put up I got everything zip tied together uh, make sure it won't touch anything or chafe any wires so go ahead and pop the uh, hood back on and we're ready to uh, get this thing back out there There's another mod on here I've been meaning to show you guys for a while, and uh, every time I shoot a video I forget. If you look at my race, you'll notice that it uh, has a little bit lower stance than normal. There are people who have these things slammed way down, but I still like to have some suspension travel because uh, I like to jump and kind of bash this thing around. But This is a free mod you can do on the Wraith. Um, it doesn't cost any money, you don't have to buy Stiffy Kit or anything up here to uh, uh, mess with your upper suspension mounts. This is a really cool mod you can do. <clears throat> you can literally just flip these lower suspension mounts. You just take these two bolts out here, obviously disconnect your link and your shock, and just flip it over. And that lowers you several millimeters. Um, <clears throat> people argue that you lose a bit of clearance. Um, I would argue that it's probably not noticeable. But what is noticeable is uh, handling. Once you flip those over, um, that lowers your center of gravity substantially. It's a completely free mod, um, and it makes a huge performance difference. So, I've been meaning to tell you guys for a while. Some of you don't know. Some of you who don't, uh, I highly suggest you do it. It uh, does uh, great. It does wonders for your handling your wraith.